Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. I want to do a video on the $9 million condominium that the Trudeau government purchased in New York. They did it under the guise of the old one was kind of run down. And this new one being on a cozy little area of the city known as Billionaire's Row in what is the fourth tallest building in the United States of America. But I'll get into that. I don't know how this individual, the new consul general, whose name is Tom Clark, and he was a, uh, his career as a personality, tell, like he was a TV personality. I'm not sure how he's qualified to be the consul general. I mean, typically the consul general is somewhere that you go to when you're in a little bit of a jam, when you're in a bit of a legal trouble. I mean, they kind of work in tandem with maybe the ambassador. Why we need to have this building on billionaire's row it's really bizarre to me. I um, don't see the necessity of having it in a fancy place. You and I are living in a time when, when our money is going nowhere, grocery prices are through the roof, and the federal government has elected to purchase a $9 million property so they can impress... I don't know who they're trying to impress, but it doesn't impress me, I can assure you of that. However, before I get into it, I would encourage you all to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this channel with all of your socials. Any assistance that you're willing to give me, I appreciate. All right, so I picked this article up from the Financial Post because I think that they say some things that you as Canadians need to know. The lavish condo purchased for the Consul General in New York epitomizes Trudeau's profligacy which is just a word meaning opulence, overspending, greed, complete and utter disregard for what things cost. And I'm sure we can all agree that that does epitomize the Trudeau legacy. That will be how history remembers them. No matter how many books they try to write to change history, the, the, the truth will out, as they say. Although the apartment isn't meant for a king, it's fit for a king. Its sheer extravagance is annoying given the state of Canada's economy thanks to nine years of Trudeau's spendthrift and irresponsible government. And that I mean that's pretty important to think about, that he's spending this money while telling you to tighten your, to tighten your belt. He's saying to you, I got your back, I know your problems, I, I feel your pain. Meanwhile, he takes nine million Canadian tax dollars and buys an apartment on Billionaire's Row in New York. Now, it's not that far from where the other place was, the place that we purchased in 1961. So we've had that one for 60 years. Oh, it needs to have some work done to it. And rather than pay for to have the work done to it, we just simply buy a high-end condominium a few blocks over that overlooks Central Park, probably one of the most expensive views in all of the Eastern United States. But he doesn't care. He gave, the Consul General is a TV personality. I'm not sure how he's qualified. However, the details of the condo are quite eye-popping. The condo is 3,600 square feet with access to a pool and other amenities. Now, I was under the impression that the Liberal government didn't like swimming pools, didn't like uh, ice rinks because they're too heavy on the carbon. Or is that just something they say and not mean? The carrying costs are eye-popping. Uh, an apartment in the building cost $10,000 US a month in taxes and 9,500 in monthly common charges. So that's roughly a quarter of a million US dollars a year just in condo fees and property taxes. You have to pay 10 grand a month to property taxes and you have to pay 10 grand a month to monthly charges right and if any of you are listening to this and you live in a condo you know it's what condo fees it's going to cover i don't know what the security in the basement there's a lifeguard probably because it has an indoor swimming pool there's a private chef i mean the things that it's covering are things that were, are well above and beyond what you and i could ever hope to um write off as tax you know they would never you, the government's not going to say to you all oh, you're allowed to pay that ex you're, we're going to write off that thousand dollars you pay in condo fees because that's just given to the guy that mows the lawn or whatever it is they're not going to give you that so why why do we have to pay for it why can't we shouldn't we be better off to have a, a building and then just hire canadians to work the grounds 
but the Liberal government doesn't care about giving you jobs. I don't know why they want to act this way. I can't, I can't understand the motivation. Here's the New York Post's description of the place. Spanning more than 3,600 square feet, the apartment features an elegant foyer with stone floors and a powder room. So as soon as you walk in, there's a small bathroom, probably for where you can check yourself on the way out, and a stone floor. That then opens up into a spacious living room with an adjacent dining room. Well, I mean, you got to have a place to sit while you're waiting for dinner, right? Don't forget, this guy's not going to cook for himself. There's a staff. There's staff. This place has staff. And I don't think for one second that they live in the place. They have to take the bus. Maybe they have a different apartment somewhere. The separate kitchen is equipped with a wet bar. Because, you know, you wouldn't want somebody in the living room serving drinks. They have to come from a separate room with a tray. Cristalio gold quartzite countertops, custom handcrafted cabinetry, and a full suite of Gagano appliances. So you might be asking yourself, what is a gold quartzite countertop? Well, here's an example of one right now. Not too shabby, you want my opinion. And... And of course, I, I put one for the kitchen, so you might get an idea of what it would look like if you were sitting around in your uh, regular, everyday, ordinary area. And now, a full suite of Gagano appliances seems to be quite the thing. Here we have a dishwasher that's worth $5,000, and a appliance, just the top of the stove, right, is four grand. I really love the built-in coffee maker with the coffee maker built into the wall, 6600 US dollars. So that's that seems like a bargain, practically a steal. You know, I mean, why would you need to worry about it? And then what I what I really appreciate is the $15,000 stove. Because it's, you know, a 30-inch double wall one over the other. Of course, if you want to get the single one, it's only 8 grand. But I would think that if you're throwing parties and opulence and, you know, a lot of Canadian booze is probably just free flowing. A lot of champagne, it's all picked up by the Canadian taxpayer anyway, so what would it matter, right? I would, I would think that you will need the $16,000 stove to make that look appropriate. You, know, you wouldn't want people to think that, you know, you worked for a humble country. <laughs> now, I don't want you to worry because there's a study right next to the foyer, so the individual that's doing the bringing lunch won't have to go that far the consul general will have the study in this 3,600 square foot apartment building. It's an apartment. It's a condo. The primary corner bedroom boasts an expansive walk-in closet, which is probably bigger than my apartment. A windowed bathroom adorned with an Italian white vento marble, a freestanding copper soaking tub, and custom bronze fixtures. A freestanding copper soaking tub. Man, I, I I mean, that's rated as some sort of cowboy movie, isn't it? That's astounding. I would love to have one of those in my house. I mean, that would be amazing. But this guy obviously worked hard for it. He's Trudeau's buddy. So he gets the job to be council general, 150 grand a year. A lot of expenses paid, free high-end condominium in New York City. Uh, pays to be a liberal insider, I guess. The building amenities are sh nothing short of luxurious, featuring an 82-foot lane, two lane. So it's 82 feet. There's two lanes for swimming. <laughs> Come on. With a private cabana, a separate sauna, because, you know, you wouldn't want people to see you in the sauna, and a treatment room for, you know, when you need a massage, Right. A double height fitness center with a mezzanine terrace, private dining room with a chef's catering, a residence lounge with a sprawling terrace. So what that means is there's two floors to the, to, there's the pool, then there's the workout area, then there's a mezzanine that you can jog around. And when you're done all that, the private chef will make you some breakfast that you can enjoy on the mezzanine. Don't worry about it. We'll just send the bill to your apartment. I just have a hard time understanding why this is the good look for Canada. I don't care to impress other countries' world leaders. I really don't have that. I'm Canadian. I don't really have that level of, of necessity. I don't have that level of, 
of need. Like I just simply do not need to worry about what other people are thinking about me. Does that mean that we should let the guy live in squalor? No, not like the rest of Canadians living in squalor. But it does not bode well that you're going to buy an apartment that is right on the cutting edge with a swimming pool, private chefs, and very much exclusivity. When you're supposed to be representing Canada, when you're supposed to be attainable and um, accessible to people who are in a jam in the city of or in the country of of the United States. You, you're living like a king in there on the Canadian tax dollar. Don't forget, that's 250000 Canadian dollars in the U.S. that they pay just for the taxes and the maintenance of the place. That's not the staff, the grocery bill. Imagine what that will look like. It's not like they're going to have hot dogs. They're not having no cheesies up in there. It's all going to be some high-end stuff with a high-end chef, probably two uh cleaning people a driver can't who 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 drives a parks a car in new york city and that's just what i can think of off the top of my head so i don't know that this is a good look and i don't care that our other building was in bad shape that doesn't that doesn't mean that you because our other building is in bad shape that you should go and spend drop 10 million dollars on a, an apartment that's going to cost us upwards to a half a million dollars in upkeep every year a half a million dollars that we could be putting towards other things if people think that they can come to the council general and all of a sudden they're going to be ooed and odd and wowed those are not the kind of people that canada should be doing business with and they can simply take the elevator on their way back down, stop on the pool on their way out. It doesn't matter because I will be at a much more humble place, a, a much more welcoming and warming place that will better epitomize the, what Canada should re be representing to the outside world. Isn't that what Trudeau's always talking about? How he's this superstar champion of he's leading the world to this and leading the world to that. I mean, every time he says it, you can see his ego swell just a little bit. It's so big, sometimes it don't even fit on the screen, I'm, I'm convinced. But the message that comes out of the Liberal Party as a whole is that there's some sort of champions for spreading the Canadian message. And yet, whenever I turn around, it's private islands, it's private buildings, it's security, 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 it's where I go, you're not allowed to go, it's you're not allowed to talk to me, it's private screening areas. Everything is private, private, private. I'm not sure how that ties in with the message of the liberal party maybe i'm maybe i got it all wrong maybe one of you could leave or all of you could leave comments and let me know how i'm overlooking the obvious inclusivity in all of this exclusivity because i really don't get it but i could be wrong all right i'm gonna wrap here i want to thank you all for listening i'll talk to you next time